All right guys, today I am out here with the cattle standing next to these big huge bales of hay and I kind of wanted to, to give you kind of a, a primer on the difference between hay versus straw. And I know when I first started in cattle, uh, actually feeding hay, <laughs> it was really confusing for me to really get a grasp on the difference in for the first couple of years, I kept calling hay straw and straw grass, <laughs> straw hay. <laughs> and in this video, I kind of want to give you the, the difference between the two. So this right here, these bales, this is hay. And basically, hay is made uh, usually from grass, just regular old grass you grow on your lawn. <laughs> it's a different uh, species of grass, but it's basically just straight grass. And there's also alfalfa. You can get alfalfa hay. And alfalfa is actually a legume, which uh, is really high in protein. But a lot of people kind of shy away from it. Um, for me, it kind of gives the cattle the runs. And uh, you have to be real careful switching over to alfalfa because cattle can bloat and die real easy. So most people tend to prefer to go with just kind of a kind of a straight grass. Uh, actually, for for most people with horses, I think uh, a blend is probably ideal. Most people go with uh, just a little bit of alfalfa, usually like 10 to 20 percent, uh, just to give it more palatability. It makes the horses eat it a little bit better. As a matter of fact, with my animals, a blend is. I actually prefer a blend because they like to eat alfalfa more than they like to eat just a straight grass. And uh, if you look at these guys now, I've been feeding the straight grass in, and they, they're loving it because it's, it's a really high quality <laughs> grass. This is like a, like a horse quality grass. And I buy it by the big bales, so it's, uh, it's a lot cheaper if you buy it, you know, six tons or six thousand pounds at a time <laughs> and these guys are doing great on this if you had a lower quality grass um, if it uh, if it kind of turns brown a little bit then uh, it has I would say a lower palatability and it's harder to get your animals to eat it and at that point a lot of people mix in a little bit of alfalfa to, to kind of help the animals enjoy it a little bit better <laughs> And the other thing about hay is I've been I've been picking up, buying, and feeding, hauling hay for I don't know 15 years now I'd say, and and I would say uh, being a hay farmer is like there are there is an art to being a hay farmer. Let me tell you, <laughs> it's almost like it's almost like magic how how. Some people, you can have the same field, the same grass, and depending on how you cut it and how you dry it, uh, increases the palatability, the color, the texture, when you cut it. And uh, so, so ideally, most people cut it right before it goes to seed. And when you cut it, it can't be raining. <laughs> so if it's so, it's so a bad hay year, uh, you'll see some people say, "Well, it rained and rained and rained for the whole month, and all the grass went to seed." If it goes to seed, then what happens is the the, the grass actually puts all the energy into the seed head, and the leafy part of the grass turns into a stem, and you get stemmy hay, which a lot of the animals won't eat, and then usually they sell it really cheap because it's not very good grass. So that's kind of the grass and the alfalfa as pretty much what we talk about when we're talking about hay. And when we talk about straw, straw is completely different. So I'm actually out of straw and I need to get some today. That's where I'm headed. And basically I just have a little bit, if you look in the corner here, uh, I have a little bit of straw. So this is straw, completely different than hay. And it basically has very little nutritional value. And it's like the stems of uh, like a wheat or a rye or sometimes oats. It's just the stems from uh, from a grain plant, and it has a lot of uses. Uh, some feedlots actually will take the uh, the hay and they'll blend it in the feed, kind of as a, a f like a feed enhancer to kind of give it more 
volume to kind of fluff it up and give it more consistency and uh, instead of the the cows eating like just a straight grain mash it kind of fluffs it up and, and makes it a little more palatable and in really bad drought times you know a lot of people uh, I've seen this in Europe right now they're they're going through really bad droughts and people are panicking you know slaughtering all their beef cattle because they can't afford it and then the people that want to keep their beef cattle a lot of times what they'll do is they'll they'll feed like 50 50 hay and straw uh, to kind of stretch it out and it's gotten to the point so bad I, over there I've, I've seen some of these articles where straw is almost as expensive as hay now <laughs> it's crazy you know in, in drought times uh, you gotta you gotta make some decisions uh, as far as what you're going to do, especially if you have beef cattle. But there's another use for straw, and that is bedding. So take a look at this big old bull. <laughs> he is a monster. He weighs over 2,000 pounds. And I actually have two big old bulls out here, and he's enjoying his salt lick at the moment. <laughs> salt and minerals. Uh, very essential for beef cattle. So speaking of bulls, if you're running a cattle operation, what normally happens is your bulls will mate with the cows and the cows will have babies which we call calves. <laughs> it's pretty simple. And these are the calves over here. I have, I'm actually, I have five calves this year. And these guys are all doing great. I haven't had any problems really. Uh, with with my calves and uh, so, so where, the, where the bedding comes into play um, especially with these bulls um, there's one part on the bull that if it gets damaged it will shut you down as a cattle operation and that is uh, the little uh, <laughs> thing right between the legs, right underneath. Uh, I think Wikipedia calls them testicles. <laughs> so if it's really, really cold, like if it's 40 below, and your bull lays down on the snow or ice, and those testicles get frostbite, uh, what happens is it can actually sterilize the bull. And if your bull is sterilized, you can't breed the cows and if you can't breed the cows you don't get the calves and basically everything comes to a halt <laughs> and uh, then another uh, thing that I've read especially uh, I've been reading the beef magazines now there's a magazine called beef believe it or not <laughs> how many people subscribe to beef I am one of those people and in the beef magazine it says the survival of your calves depends on the amount of bedding you provide especially through the winter so, uh, I have one cow here somewhere, let's see, it is 1,001 <laughs> on the ear tag, let's see if I can, if I can find her, she's probably tucked over here, so this is actually one of my calves from last year, this 1,001 girl, and she has not had her baby yet, this one right here, really friendly girl. <laughs> So she is going to have a baby, um, uh, and the way she's not really dilated in the back, I would say it's still probably at least a month off. So when she has that baby, it's going to be really, really cold, and I really don't like to calve that late. Usually, if I start having them calve all through the year, what I'll do the next year is I'll separate the bulls from all the cows, and then pair them up at a certain time of year when I want them to breed, and that usually gets me through the next few years, so I don't have to really worry about it. But so today, <laughs> that's kind of the story about the, the hay versus the straw. Today I'm gonna go head out and, and buy some straw. His bedding, it's getting cold this time of year because uh, uh, you know it's late September, early October. We're up here in the mountains, about 9,000 feet, and I really need to get uh, a little bit of, a little bit of hay for the or straw <laughs> for the winter to use as bedding just to keep them off the ground. So <laughs> that's where I'm headed next. All right, guys. So I am loaded up for another road trip, and today I've attached my enclosed trailer to my big old Dodge Ram 3500, <laughs> and uh, this works great for for hauling small bales. So we're going to get about. Uh, I'd say we could fit in about 112 small bales in there, but I think we're just going to keep it to about 100 today. 
and let's hit the road and pick up some straw. <laughs> guys so this is kind of one of the more interesting setups here there's some some uh, straw out here we're not going to take that and actually this is an old chicken house in here it's kind of interesting and all the straw <laughs> is in here on this side and over on this side and we are going to start loading it up apparently they had baby chickens in here grew up chickens it's kind of an interesting setup. <laughs> well, I'm gonna start loading up. All right, guys, take a look. I am all loaded up and ready to go. Alright guys, so I did it again. I worked past sunset. The sun went down on me and uh, the days are really getting short. <laughs> I just can't even believe it. So uh, thanks for coming along. Hopefully you learned a little bit about straw and a little bit about hay and uh, the differences between them and the different uses for each one. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.